McDavid. Moves in, McDavid goes upstairs! What a goal! Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode 9 of this Journeyman franchise mode. Currently, we are transitioning between teams just leaving the Winnipeg Jets. And, well, as you can see, if you watched last episode, uh, we are kind of pushing the offseason here. So, by the looks of it, the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning win the cup there. That's normally how it goes. And we have offers here for a contract. So, you guys voted on teams. Um, your options were Arizona, Buffalo, Florida, and Vancouver. I do see Minnesota was in there now as well. I don't know how many votes they would have gotten since they, again, are offering us a four-year deal. Um, that's kind of one of the biggest factors with how the voting went, I think, because our goal here is to win as many cups with as many different teams that haven't won the Stanley Cup as possible. So that's why I love this Vancouver pick so much. And you guys felt the same way by the looks of it. So I'll show the vote up on the screen right now. Vancouver won by a landslide. It was like 70% versus 5-5 five, five, and 17 uh, for Arizona, Florida, and Buffalo actually had the second most votes. But the problem there is that they have uh, a four-year offer there, which is not as great as we were hoping for. Um, all these other teams obviously have won. The Panthers were enticing too because, you know, Anthony Buss is going to be a monster of a player over the next few years. But I really like how Vancouver's built. So we are going to be transitioning over to the Canucks. So slightly different look here now to our setup. Bo Horvat had himself a fabulous season. And as you can see, the Canucks are contenders. I've been waiting a while to actually jump into this team and get, get to work on it. I mean, to be honest, they don't need that much work. Like we sent them Christian Fisher. They picked up Sammy Miku from us. Uh, this was back when we were still playing as the Winnipeg Jets. And they got depth, man. They got some depth in this team. Like, I am seriously impressed with how well Vancouver's done. Yes, we did hand them a couple players here and there. But by the looks of it, we uh, we got options here for sure. Wow. Uh, they got some half-decent guys there. Logan Stanley, Heinola. I guess we did trade those guys as well. Um, low starter there. Besides that, uh, not the greatest potential throughout the AHL but you know that happens um, most of their potential is actually in their NHL squad right now so we are going to sim to the draft kind of get things kicked off here with the Canucks I'm looking forward to it but as you can see there uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning win their second Stanley Cup in oh man I believe that's four seasons or five seasons now yeah that's in four seasons or yeah that's in three seasons actually the Tampa Bay's won the cup twice so that kind of stings for other franchises that are trying to win here. But by the looks of it, uh, we moved down one in the lottery with the Canucks pick there. Who moved up? Dallas and Columbus. Oh, Columbus, darn you. Okay. But anyways, um, the Vegas Golden Knights get bumped way down. That kind of sucks for them. But, you know, they still get a top five pick. And by the looks of it, same with the Canucks. Or the Canucks are got a top ten, sorry. My bad and well we'll see how this draft class goes honestly i'm excited for this draft class there are some players in here like we have the 10th pick oh we're just gonna miss out on phil taves but he's an nhl ready top six forward so that is very enticing um honestly there's a lot of nhl ready guys in here so you know bancroft's got the possibility to be really good same with this saprikin um shoot and pinch is the setup there so you got options on the defense as far as forwards go i mean a lot of these guys are you know weird etas that kind of thing but like punyanovs is a supposed two-year eta uh who is the other guy i was looking at oh yeah mccullough oh no he's a four-year eta but this guy uh zach richmond could possibly be a two-year eta as well there's some weird ones in here for sure and who else jass was yeah possible two-year eta again at the 35th pick like this is this is very interesting uh cody meach is a high elite so i think we're going to be taking him second round as long as the canucks still have their second rounder and besides that i mean oh robinson's also an elite at 65 i knew he was there 
Besides that, I don't think there are too many other picks. Hamannick's a question mark for sure. It says two years. I don't know if I believe that entirely, but uh, yeah, there's options in this draft. So this is uh, this is going to be interesting for sure. As far as player retirement goes, Corey Perry, Justin Williams, Paul Stastny, David Krejci, a lot of good players retiring there. And Williams and Perry both tie has 28th overall picks three years apart. That is very funny. Um, I didn't want to go to Winnipeg, sorry. Out of goalies in the league here, um, Mark andre Fleury, that's a big one, man. 534 wins for, wow, for the flower. That's crazy. Um, 397 for Miller, didn't quite break 400, and then it kind of drops off from there. If we look at defense... Uh, Alex Edler had himself a half decent career. Same with Jack Johnson there. I mean, he was a third overall pick, but yeah, no, not bad to be honest. That is a that is a pretty solid uh, retiree class there. And does anybody actually become you know like a scout or something? Let's see what happens here. Jalmerson becomes a coach for Arizona, and that's about it. Just a whole bunch of retiring coaches. Uh, unfortunately, we did lose a coach there in. Tuomo Mackinen. Hopefully he wasn't our head coach, but uh, I'll have to double check that. Um, I'm going to continue. I didn't want to go to the draft class. I just want to continue Simmon. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any point really to trade up with Vancouver. Like, yeah, you could try to. I don't think that's such a good idea, to be honest. They got some winger depth. They got options. And, well, I mean... 10th overall pick's pretty good. Nola Kynan's insane. Uh, they have a lot of depth here when it comes to elite players. And even besides that, like they still have defensive depth. Tyler Myers, I think we're going to throw up on the block just because, you know, there's other defenders who are going to come in here and kind of replace him over the next year or two. And yeah, not looking great for some of these guys, but overall, pretty solid. Uh, the Winnipeg picks around the 20th somewhere in there and looks like we're gonna have to re-sign Thatcher Demko that's gonna be expensive most likely um so who are the big kind of contracts in this team I mean obviously Goudreau is gonna be getting paid like crazy yeah 9.0 million um Myers is fairly expensive Horvat is a steal of a contract but he is also up so we're gonna have to pay him oh boy there's a lot of guys that have got to get paid here and I don't know how well we're gonna be able to do that so Please don't sink for my data right now in the middle of me recording. Thank you very much. Um, anyways, wait, who? Okay, by the looks of it, our NHL coach didn't retire, so that's good. Dumont, he's a generalist. Okay, 64% um, system fits pretty solid. Maybe we'll try to you know improve that a little bit, considering Sabarin doesn't really fit. But Nolakainen does. Um... Yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll check that out in a bit. But we have the draft coming up right now. And, well, we got to make a couple moves here, I think. So we're going to jump into the draft class. We'll, ch we'll see right away if this is going to be a strong draft class or not, depending on how good St. Louis's first overall pick is. 81. Okay, so a bunch of these NHL-ready guys, I don't know how NHL-ready they really are. Uh, our other pick there lands at 28. Yikes. I guess that's where, yeah, that's where the Jets finished, so. Mm. Um, so let me just go through, kind of just pick off guys in the draft class who we want to try and get, and then we'll move on from there. Okay, so by the looks of it, um, oh, they don't want to take him, okay. So, I think we're going to try, we're going to try Tyler Myers. Okay, so they won't take just Tyler Myers in exchange for those three picks. I mean, those are three fairly valuable picks, to be fair. But, if we go, yeah, I don't want to go Lind. No, not yet. Maybe like that. Go Backlund plus Myers in exchange for three picks from Detroit. Nice. Okay. So, yes, we trade away Tyler Myers, but we pick up more picks here in this draft. And, well, as you can see... Man, Jaden Tan was a decent pick there, ninth overall. Taves as well, we were looking at him. And then, you know, the top five are elite. Besides that, not much else really. Jaden Tan, 
was supposed to go top six and actually dropped off quite a ways. Honestly, I was ready to pick him up if he was still there. But now it comes down to, do we go with Bancroft or do we go with Saperic or Sap Saprikin, sorry, that's his name, Saprikin. Okay, that's really that's really kind of what it comes down to. I think it's more on system fit here than anything, but let's see, Quinn Hughes has got, oh, it doesn't show, dang it, okay. Actually, no, it does. Pinch and shoot seems to be kind of the go-to for the defense. And a pinch and cycle does not fit so well. Looks like that's the case for a lot of it. Yikes. Okay, so we're going for the shoot kind of defender, I guess. So that means we are going for Bancroft. No, we're going for Saperkin, who's a guaranteed, okay. He's a guaranteed uh, NHL-ready defensive defenseman. So I don't think we're making the wrong pick here. Yeah, 77 overall, that's pretty solid. What did we miss out on? Yeah, Bancroft is a two-way, yeah. But, you know, at the same time, I don't know how well he actually fits our team. We're going to move over to pick 28 now, see what else we missed out on, because some of, yeah, <laughs> cop stalls. Jeez, buddy. Some of these picks said they were supposed to be really good. Like, Hamilton's not bad at all. Fisher, oh, he's an elite right there. No. Oh, well. Offensive defenseman, too. And LaPointe was also... Oh, he's a righty. No. Was it Gas Gaspard? Yeah, Gaspard LaPointe would have been a nice pickup for the Canucks system here. That is quite short on right-handed defenseman at the moment. So we're going to try Zach Richmond here. I mean, he's a right-handed defenseman. Says that he could have his short a, as a two-year ETA. We're going to hope it's that. I don't think he's going to turn out. But yeah, oh, ooh, that's a bad 28th overall pick. Okay, so who else did we miss? Because that was not a great first round pick there to end it. Oh man, that would have been much better. Clifford Eddie, that's a nice pick up there for that team. Yeesh, okay. So now, wait, where is our next pick after this one? Next pick's at 64. Okay, so we should be able to pick up that goalie, the high elite that we were looking at. So honestly, man, I'm kind of feeling Boris Joss here, or Yass, Yass, Joss, whatever you want to call him. Um, 5'10", right wing playmaker, possibly as short as a two-year ETA. 69 rated sniper, that's pretty solid, man. I'm happy with that. Boris Joss, hey, as a second round pick, that's, that's fairly impressive, to be fair. And... I mean, 69 rated, that's kind of the overall to beat right here. And medium top six would be the potential. Low elite, not, oh, oh, Meech went way higher than he was supposed to, I'm pretty sure. Shore goes high as well. Reeves goes, oh, wow, that was a lot of good goalies there. Okay, um, Meech went way higher than I expected him to. But, you know, 51 rated, hey, that's good. That is good for Minnesota, to be fair. And then, yeah, Calgary's won a cup already. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm happy with that. Minnesota got themselves a good goalie for the future, but we are going to take Will Robinson here, you know, just for value reasons more than anything. And bada-bing, bada-elite, oh, 59-rated elite goalie, nice. Okay, that was that was very solid. Um, I don't think there's a pick better than that in here. Yeah, no, I don't. Oh, medium starter. Kong looks pretty decent. Mayer is a 71. Jeez, buddy. Okay. So, I mean, three picks in a row here for the Canucks, like second overall in the second, third, and fourth rounds. I'm fairly happy with how all of these have turned out. And, well, I don't know who our next pick's going to be, to be honest, because... It's kind of hard to pick out who the good players are from the bad. Usually the ETA kind of helps, but once you get to these rounds, not so much. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like a lot of goalies and not a lot of potential here. So, Cunning, yeah, right-handed D, but five-year ETA. 
yeah, no, it, it's too difficult to really tell. So we're kind of just making a blind pick here. And I guess we'll go with the next closest kind of player here. Yeah, we're going to go with uh, Cooper, Cooper, Cooperinen, Cooperinen, I don't know. Joachim Cooperinen. And oh, okay. Okay, medium top six forward. That's very good for what I was expecting. Um, I, you know, he might not develop, but I'm still happy with that. Oh, crap, Chanko. Why you got to do that to me? Medium elite, man. Come on. And he's just five picks after our own. Oh, that one stings. See, now I have to take a risk on every single elite I see. So, Laura Kynan here. Anti Lori Kynan. Probably not going to turn out to be anything. Yeah, medium top six. Defender. How many picks did we have in a row here in the fourth round? Holy. And then that guy could have as low as a three or ETA. He's probably not going to turn out at all. Yeah, exactly. That's how it goes is the guys that actually look like they hold some kind of potential are just terrible. <laughs> like, <laughs> yikes. Okay. Well, Kravchenko stings there. And considering Colorado got two picks in a row, you know, they did well on their first one for sure. Oh, and Witt was also an elite goalie. Not much we can do here. Oh, Alfredson, nice backup rating. Jeez. Okay, so, you know, I'm kind of feeling cunning just because he's a right-handed D. That would be very nice, but... Yeah, there aren't many other options, so I'm going to take a risk on cunning. If he doesn't pan out, oh well. That's pretty normal. Yeah, 7th D. Yeesh. <laughs> Okay, over to the sixth round now, and does not look like there were many options here in this draft as we get into the later rounds. So, I mean, the first couple rounds, I was very happy with our picks. That happiness is kind of worn off since then, so we're going to try Damien Trafford. Medium bottom six forward, 53 rated. Oh, and we miss out on, you know, a bunch of low elites, actually. Nice, okay. Yikes. I feel like this is a fairly common way that drafts go, is that we just, you know, land some good players at the top, and then that's it. Like, you don't get any other shots at this. Okay, so, you know, I'm fairly happy with how this draft's gone. I'm not going to complain. We got some really good prospects. going to try Reginald Bishop here, and he's a medium seventh. Yet again, okay, so didn't really miss anything in the seventh round. Saperkin was easily, like, our best pick, I think. Um, Jass, or Yass, however you say it, was a really good second rounder. Robinson's got some good potential. Cooper Reinen, I think, had... Uh, medium top six potential and then the next five picks after that were all brutal so yeah Vancouver lands about four solid prospects there and uh, you know hopefully that can help going into the offseason we got to make some more signings re-sign some coaches Kim Sallow needs a new contract okay why can't it be Sammy Sallow man Vancouver I don't know if he's a Vancouver legend but he's a good player for the Canucks for a long time and then we'll, you know, just get all the coaches or scouts signed as well. And how many more? Okay, it's just those two. Nice. Okay. So falling scouts have not expired because I just fixed that. All right. And we got to sign some players here, which is the slightly scary part. We do have $21 million, uh, to spend on players. And by the looks of it, Horvat got himself a fat extension that I did not put in. Holy. Okay. Quinn Hughes has definitely got the best contract out of these top guys, but he is done in just a year or two. Toffoli and Niku both looking pretty solid. I mean, I really like Toffoli's contract, man. Don't get me wrong on that, but besides that, you know, like, let's check out each position. What needs some focus? What is absolutely fine as it is? And by the looks of it, um, you know, if these guys want a million bucks... Yeah, see, Gaetan Haas, I can't offer you that kind of money, bud. 
but see a guy like Ryan Strom, easily we can offer the entry level or the AHL kind of level contract. Uh, this guy, you know, will offer him more money. I don't even want to try to pronounce that. And then Carlson will offer a deal as well. He should sign. Uh, we didn't do very well on our center draft in there. Uh, but luckily, Vancouver managers before us have. So uh, Niles Hoglander, we're definitely going to want to re-sign here. He's looking, dang, he's looking good, man. We'll give him a one-year contract. Hopefully he can perform. Uh, by the looks of it, JT Miller's gone. Uh, Gadjevic here, Luke Gadjevic, uh, we'll give him like an 850 contract. Uh, Furlan dropped off as well, man. Yikes. That's a couple guys that normally were like, oh yeah, these are going to be Vancouver's like good players for a long time. They just disappeared. <laughs> um, I mean, as far as rating went, they disappeared. Ryan Zingle, that's a good contract. I will sign that all day. Okay, uh, right wingers to Foley and Nolakainen, or Nokalainen, sorry. What's his name? Yanni Nokalainen. He's actually a beast. Uh, those guys look really good. Connor Fisher. That's a pretty solid contract still, too. Um, and then I guess we'll go over Tannen. Yeah, we'll sign all these guys. They're not going to be stupid expensive. And they fit where we need them to. Does he say no? Oh, he... Okay, we'll qualify him, and nobody's going to offer him money for sure. So, yeah, just get these other contracts done for the AHL, and hopefully the... Uh, what's the team called? The... Um, Comets, that's what they're called. Utica Comets will do just fine. This defense is actually a deal. Wow. Like, they are in good shape. So maybe, hey, you, Ben Hutton, I'm sorry, man, but you're not worth $2 million a year. Maybe this is kind of where the, uh, the Canucks use their strong suits to possibly get an extra piece or two because the defense looks really dang solid, man. Like, there is nothing I want to change on that. I do want to bring in a right-handed D simply because the system fits not so great as far as a guy like Niku goes. But, you know, worst case scenario, we still have other players in here that will fill in these roles. And Ben Hutton's not getting it. Oh, you know who I forgot that is actually the most important piece of this entire team at the moment is, uh, yeah, Thatcher Demko. Oh, he doesn't want a deal. Oh, buddy. Buddy, that's not good. That is really not good. Oh boy. Okay, we're gonna have six years, seven million. And we cannot have Mike DiPietro as the lone goalie there. That can't happen. <laughs> okay, no, we need Demko to resign. That is one of the biggest uh, deals here that we need to go through. So, what happens here? Coaches sign, Hoglander signs. Um, okay, well, Ryan Zingle, we are going to probably make the playoffs this year. Um, Ryan Strom doesn't want to re-sign. Nice, okay. Demko wants even more money. Oh, boy. By the looks of it, most of those guys signed. But Demko wants more money. Ryan Zingle wants more money. This is... It's not like a huge issue yet, but... Yeah, he wants more money. He's going to want $3 million at least. Let's try 3.1 on him. Because I don't know what the class is going to look like here for wingers and different guys like that. Killington's that expensive? Oh my god. He doesn't even fit the system. That's not... That's a little worrisome. Okay. Okay, so let's try a four-year, $7.5 million contract for Thatcher Demko. He probably should accept that. But, um, yeah, yikes. What? You want to watch your game on the big screen? When does it start? Four o'clock. I got a videotape so we could watch it with Fast Forward if you want for less time. Okay. Yes, no. They're probably just going to lose again. Well, yeah, but it's neat to see it on a big screen. Yeah, except when they're losing. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's no fun to watch the game. 
And oh good, we did not have the budget to sign a coach. Ryan Zingle signs, Demko still wants more cash, you greedy, greedy goalie. Not impressed, man. Not impressed. How much money do we still have? We got 15 million. I'm offering him 8 million for only 3 years. That's all he gets and if he rejects that, well then he's not signing. Cuz Nola Kainen or Nokalainen, sorry, is going to be asking for money in a couple of years. Killington's got a ridiculous contract. Anybody else here who does not have a good deal? Um, okay, Ryan Strom, we need to offer more money. Go one million dollar for one year, and yeah, not ideal. And okay, Ryan Strom decides to resign, and Demko takes the eight million. Oh, buddy, that was more budget than I wanted to release, but now yeah, we can't sign any scouts right now. It's NHL Central. Yeah, I think we'll be fine, but, you know, Boris, Boris Joss, I don't want to, like, is it Joss or Yas? You guys need to let me know, do I use the Y on there or not? Um, by the looks of it, Canone somehow grew without playing any games at all. <laughs> don't ask me how, but that happened. Um, and we will figure out if he's, he's probably going to be playing alongside Quinn Hughes, just because then it balances out and they should be really good together. Uh, but we'll figure that out as once the lines kind of start taking shape here. And, you know, we will check out free agency because I think we still have about another... We have some money still, which is crazy to think about. But, yeah, eight and a half million. Oh, <laughs> Patrick Line. Hello. Um, no, as far as signings go here, we don't have a ton of money, but... There are some interesting ideas that we could follow here as far as a Kachuk possibly. That would be, I mean, ugh, RFA. But that might be the push that this team needs to get over the hump into the playoffs. That's possible. Duran wants too much money, and some team is going to give it to him, which is a little sad, but whatever. Um, by the looks of it, only one team's really going for Patrick Line. Eh? And Dylan Larkin's a freaking good option, too. I would love to sign him, but I don't think any of those are really happening. I think Kachuk is possibly the best option here. Even as an RFA, you put him on the left or right side there, and, you know, you got some you got some talent up front. Don't get me wrong. So, yeah, you know, Kachuk might be the, uh, the go-to here for us. I want to see what Calgary's kind of budget is. Because we might have to offer a certain amount of money here just to get Kachuk. I mean, moving Canadian markets, I think that would help the Canucks big time. If Matthew Kachuk actually could sign here. But uh, let's see. Calgary, how much cap space you got? Oy. They're probably going to want to sign somebody here. They are a rebuilder, though. Yeah, they got $29 million in cap space. Shoot. And Kachuk, well, he's got no ears left. They also need to sign Lindholm and Mantha and who else? Lindholm, Mantha, actually not Mantha. They're looking to get rid of Mantha. Okay, so what does this team still need as far as pieces go? I think the defense is going to grow. I don't think we need to pursue any kind of defenders here. Um, so as far as centers go, I think our center group is good for the moment. Wait, where? Who was, oh yeah, Goddat was the other one that I was looking at. Yeah, Horvat and Pedersen are a really good one-two punch at center. Um, as far as left wingers go, Goudreau, Zingle, yeah, Johansson, Hoglander. That's that's good again. Like I'm not worried about that. See, that's where a second, like a true second line left winger, would come in handy because both those guys, Zingle and uh, Johansson, are getting kind of old. On the other wing here. Fisher and Vertanen are fine there. Nola Kainen and yeah, honestly Toffoli even is fine. Right wingers would be something that we could pursue, but Nokalainen's gonna 
turn out to be a really good winger over the next year or two. So that's why I don't really want to pursue any right wingers. As far as defense goes, we got six out and out defenders here. Um, there's no question here that this group is going to be good over the next couple seasons. And then in goal, I mean, <laughs> you have an elite goalie in Demko and then Michael DiPietro is a very solid backup. So yeah, I think we're kind of just looking at a winger here. So we're going to try, uh, we're not going to try and trade. We're going to try and make an offer here for Kachuk. And I, I mean, Calgary should match it, but if they don't, that would be awesome. <laughs> he wants what? 6.3 million. Can we offer him a five year deal for like 7 million a year? Actually, do we have all the picks to do that? I think we do. This year's first, second, and third. I think it's going to be worth it. I think we do that. Kachuk is, yeah, he'll just be good. <laughs> okay, so we're going to offer that. We'll see if that actually goes through. And then... Nobody else really to pursue at this point. You could try to go for a guy like Hosang or try to go for depth or something like that. I don't think I think the Canucks need another kind of star power player here to get over the hump and really compete. Line A, I don't think so. You'd be offering a lot for him. Doesn't make sense. Um the Brinkett. Chicago's obviously interested. Same thing with Line A, Winnipeg's still there. As far as, yeah, ooh, we'd be offering Larkin $10 million if we tried to go for him. And how's his face-offs? 93 face-offs. So he'd be probably taking a centering role away from Pedersen, which just doesn't make sense. Nah, -uh. okay. So I'm assuming that the uh, Flames are going to match this deal here. They might not. They might just be like, yes, give us the picks for Kachuk. And so he accepts the offer. So I get the feeling the Canucks are going to, or the Flames are going to match this. Please. Do we get lucky here? Really, we're 10 days in now and they haven't matched it yet. Oh, Calgary decides they are not willing to match Kachuk. Let's go. Big acquisition in the offseason. Oh, baby, that is nice. So now, let's see. We're still listed as a contender. I think it's just because our defense isn't like top end yet. It's close, but it's not top end. See, Ristolainen is another defender where he could be really good, could fit what our team needs, but at the same time, I don't know if we have enough to offer in return. So we would have to go with Robinson for sure, just as value. Um, then we would have to go, skaters matching the block, please tell me. Oh, they got nobody on there, okay. Then we'd have to go Johansson and Killington. And is the value, yeah, value's not there still, man. Dang it. <laughs> I don't want to give up that Saprikin guy that we just drafted. I'd prefer not to do that. We might have to throw a first in too. Okay. Oh, this is risky business, but it might prove to be what we need. So bringing in Kachuk and Ristolainen, I think that's really good for Vancouver. I'm going to try a second rounder first instead of a first rounder. So let's try... The 2025 20, second, plus Robinson, Johansson, and Killington in exchange just for Rasmus Ristolainen. Rejected. They do not like what we're handing them. Okay, so let's try first. You got you to gotta be more happy with that. Oh, what kind of salary are you trying to save? You have Ristolainen on the block. Um, what? Why? Why doesn't that go through? That's a decent deal. Okay, maybe Saprikin is the player we have to move here. I don't want to, but we might have to. 
I'm gonna try Hynola in here too. If they say no to this, then what are they even doing? Yeah, okay. Like, <laughs> we pick up Ristaline and we pay a fairly heavy price for him, to be honest. But, um... Yeah, we got a better group here for sure. Um... Yeah, okay, let's get to the next season, see how this team shapes up. They've got championship status now because of that other elite. So, let's see. Can the Canucks at least make the playoffs for the upcoming season? Let's see how their team looks. Okay, so heading into the next season, 77% of the tickets sold. That's a better number. I like to see that. So, uh, yeah, the Canucks should be looking into... Uh, to making the playoffs here for sure oh, they want us to win the cup just first season like you gotta win it Jeez, okay um it's a possibility for sure they need to upgrade the club seats do that kind of things concession okay so yeah that's a good lineup don't get me wrong like we should be probably winning with this lineup on uh, why is no Kalinen not on the first or second line what about no Kalinen there oh okay yeah yeah no we'll stick with that, man that worked last season for uh horvat for sure he had a killer year Pedersen fits perfectly there holy what a guy yeah i know all these guys just fit well where they are i'm happy with this lineup dude <laughs> yeah what about defense oh there's the negatives but man look at look at this guy harrison canone where did he come from he's just crazy good I really like that top pairing too. Hey, we got no chemistry here. Uh, that wasn't. I wasn't done with that. Okay. I like the lines. Uh, I feel like we're missing a guy or two. Okay. So somebody went down to the AHL by accident here. Yeah. Why is Hoglander in the AHL, dude? Dude, come on. He's 81 rated. Like you gotta. You gotta make a, an exception there. And then they give us like no defense. <laughs> oh, what is what is my coaching staff doing here, man? And they don't even play Boris Yass. Or Jass. I don't I don't even know how you say it, but he's a good player, either way. See, this is tough because okay, a guy like you levy. Dude, like this these pairings are so good. I can't touch them. Even if it's a zero, like man, Sabarin and uh, you levy are gonna be really good together still. Uh, Canon and Niku will be fine, and then Ristolainen and, and Hughes is insane. As far as the rest of this group goes, not as much actually. Yeah, that's still a pretty lottery heavy team. A lot of first rounders in this team, and uh, I mean we'll make it work, but. At the same time, I think Ryan Strom or Adam Gaudet, one of these two, should probably not be playing right off the bat here. So we're going to get a roster move or two set up, but this team is really good. How's the goalies? Demko and DiPietro, they're set. I don't have many worries with this team. Corpus Salo in the AHL. I don't know why they signed him, but that works. Let's check out the captains. Horvat should be captain. Yep. Uh, Pedersen doesn't even get a letter, man. Really? See, I think that's wrong. But, yeah, I, Goudreau could have a letter. I, I get that. Why is he not number 13? Is 13 retired? No, it's not. 13's available, too, man. Like, come on. You gotta give Johnny his, the right number there. See, ugh. It doesn't feel right having, uh... Goudreau is an alternate and not Pedersen. Like, ah, we'll leave it just for morale reasons, but like that, do that doesn't feel right. That doesn't sit right with me. So we're going to make a roster move here quickly, and then I think that's going to be more or less it for this episode here. We've been going for almost an hour on the recording. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, well, Lannan and Snugger are both going to get the pull. They're going to get yanked down to the... AHL, Hoglander's going to get the call, and no waivers, so looks good. Let's edit these lines up a little bit. 
and well the only change we're gonna make here is uh hoglander is going in on the fourth line yeah he fits fine there i'm not worried about that dude this team is good this is a good team for sure oh. okay let's put zykov in there hopefully he fits nice Then on the extras, three on three. Let's move Cole Lind up. Let's move Glenn Denning up. And then let's throw in. I don't even know who else. We got two other guys like defenders there who we can throw in. Oh, Boris Yas. Oh, we have too many skaters dressed now. No. Okay. Um, let's get this guy out. I have Carl Plat Plasic Plasic Plasic. I don't know how you say it. It's probably Plasic. Scratch him. Throw Yas in here. Boris Yas. Okay, that looks good. And then on defense, we need to scratch. Oh no! Oh, I hit best lines. Oops. Okay, that messed everything up. Shoot, <laughs> that messed everything up. That's not what I wanted. Okay, so by the looks of it, we're not going to get perfect chemistry here, but, you know, it's still solid, and uh, there's still some really good players in this team. And, yeah, no, they should be able to get things done still. Coldland going to kind of be the main guy on this team, I think, but we'll see how everything plays out. Uh, but, yeah, no, this Vancouver team's looking pretty solid. Same with Utica, and, yeah, it's gonna be uh, gonna be a good episode coming up next because well I mean let's see what the draft class holds first looks like a defenseman heavy draft here but Ahmed Paco we can't even scout awesome <laughs> Gordy Slater from the Kelowna Rockets defenseman he's a righty as well and then Nick Seal Terry Hogan and Anybody else? I can't scout that guy either. Kvasha? Kvash I don't know how you say it. Kvasha. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Apparently we have no scouts at all. So yeah, I'll have to get the scouting sorted out for the next episode. That kind of thing. That guy looks like a German player. Yep. Marco Koch. Or Koch or I don't know how you say it. Koch probably. But anyways... That is pretty much going to be wrapping this episode up. If you guys are looking forward to seeing more game plan episodes with the Vancouver Canucks, then go down below, leave a like on the video. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Like, if you made it to the end and haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Like, that's all I upload here, really, is NHL content. And, uh, yeah, go down and subscribe. But that is going to be it for me. I hope you guys are enjoying this Journeyman series as well as any other series that are on my channel. And, uh, yeah, this is Etanios signing out. See ya!